Y'all, sometimes I podcast because I want to keep it deep. Sometimes I podcast because I want to make you cry. Sometimes I'm podcasting because I really want to tell you something you don't know. Every now and then, I'm podcasting because there's a little bit of deep mixed in with a lot of dynamic laughter. If you don't know who Yvonne Orji is, well, you will after this episode. And I want to make sure that you are prepared to laugh. So that means if you need to add on, let's let's say that some extra absorbent material, ladies, you know who you are. Go ahead and take care of that right now or go ahead and empty your bladder. So that way you don't have to worry about the extra absorbent material. No matter what, uh, you're going to have a great time in this interview, but don't skip uh, the deep nuggets because you're laughing so hard because there are plenty of them more and more as we go. If you want to know what it is to have your life be taken by storm because God shows up and allows you to engage in the plans that he had that you never had in mind. Well, that's the kind of life you can live when you're bamboozled by Jesus. And Yvonne Orji is going to tell us all about it. Here we go. Writing. Did you write right? Did you go? Did you have a ghostwriter? What what was what what happened here? Crystal, this why you think I'm pushing so hard? This every single word. When I tell you I was shooting a movie writing, like it's so much so that I don't even remember. Like they they didn't even remember me on set because I wasn't. I was in my scene and then I was in my trailer. There was no hanging out, like how y'all doing? Like I don't even know who my castmates were. I was so <laughs> I said, oh, this is cute. It's my scene. like and when I tell you I started like guest directing because I was like, do you are you gonna see me on the turnaround? Okay, is this a two shot? Okay, I'm out. Like, uh, uh, girl, uh, I said I think my character will be gone by the time this happened in the scene. Matter of fact, write her out. If she's not gone, write her out. Like I was writing every single word of this, and pre pandemic, post pandemic, every single word, and then even when um because I did switch publishers um halfway through, and then I kind of had to rewrite it. So. Yeah, girl, it was me. Okay, but why? Because people will assume, you know, you got you got options and you have an audience. And so if you would have wanted to do it another way, that probably could have been an option. But people who write words are like, these are my words and I need to say them mm -hmm. sometimes. So why was it important for you to write yourself? Yeah, I think for me... I don't I don't know what that process would have looked like um, if someone else did. I mean, I'm Nigerian and sometimes I think our sixth long love language is suffering. So maybe I just, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, Nigerians love to suffer. We just love to suffer ourselves. Like literally everybody was like, girl, you want to live this life. Like, you mm -hmm. have somebody. And I think, I think for me, I wanted to prove to myself that I could do it. And I think, you know how like when rappers talk about like you don't write your own rhymes, <laughs> like I didn't want anyone to, to like even try and discount, you know, my ability. Like, and it's not even a discount because sometimes like my lawyers were like, no, people are just busy and they can talk to somebody who's really good. It is still your words and it's still your story, but somebody else did it. And I just like, nah, like I just, I don't know, like for me, and I'm glad I did it because I think because when you're also so in the weeds of stuff, even when you think something is done, like I went back and I was like, of course Actually, I want to say it like this. I want to say, and, and my voice, my voice is so specific. I didn't want it to be a book where it was just like, and thou art, and thus says the Lord. Because it could have nah. been. I'm sure you've ever, if you've ever flipped on an audible and listened, mm -hmm. one, the voice will throw you if somebody, if you know the voice and somebody else's voice, but the words will throw you. I can tell. I can tell when somebody had a writer. Every blue moon, you have a really good one. But most of the time, I'm like, especially if it's a voice I'm used to hearing, I know their, and I don't mean their their voice. I mean, mm -hmm. their tone in which they talk. And you can note there are nuances that you can miss if the ghostwriter's not great. Okay, so now that you did it, it yeah, would you do well, it so again? For, here's the thing. So for, to your point, I'm like, who else going to get DMX references? Who else is going <laughs> to say... Like Abraham was the first F, F boy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, that's a very specific, and for your readers and your audiences, y'all can figure out and ask your nieces and nephews uh, what an F boy is. Um, <laughs> we're going to keep it holy. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, the way I think 
it had like it had to come like because I I I I think about Bible stories. I think about the Bible. I think about my relationship with God in a way that's not like super religious. In a way that's not like alienating. For me, it is truly like how do I make this make sense to like the person in 2023 that was like, I don't really rock with the Bible. Like what that got to do with my life now? And it's like, yes, let me tell you, I got it. And that was very important for me. Even when I, um, I was doing the audiobook, people were like, no, 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 Like authors were like, no, the audiobook has to sound exactly like the, um, like the written word. You can't give anything extra. No. <laughs> Girl, you get I your best revelations when you're talking. It it, it just comes when you're talking. I said, <laughs> but my my friend, see, this is why you have to get, have good friends around you. My friend was like, "Is that person a performer?" <laughs> no. So then that 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 advice does not apply to you. And I said, sure enough, because in the audio book, girl, you got the Nigerian accent coming out in places where I have it. You get the DMX bars. I'm like, hey. <laughs> I, you get my mama be like, I don't understand this thing you want to do. Like, it is like a one-woman show for six hours. And so much so, Crystal, that I just got my numbers from the publishers. The audiobook and the hardcover have done the same exact amount. Yep. Like, they are neck. And she was like, we don't see that. They are neck and neck. Okay. They, I'm just like, people, some people got the hardcover. Some people got the audiobook. And then got the hardcover because they were like, we we want to hear your voice, but we need you to want take, both. We, there was just so much notes. We yeah. want we want. So I say all that to say, I believe it needed to be my voice. Yeah. Um. You asked, would I do it again? Would I do uh -huh. what again? Write a book uh -huh. or write it myself? Uh, both. Here's the thing. I didn't even need or want to write this book. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this was God led. This is this is God that moves a little bit. And the thing, the reality was, I, I'm not mad at it because God was like, basically, daughter, you have something experienced in this point of your life that so many other people need faith slash hope for, and. Before it gets too like, oh, you all the way over there. You don't know what it's like. It's like, no, no, no. I just made it up to the threshold. So let me tell you what worked for me. I'm still learning as I go. But what I know, like, I think sometimes people wait to be, I don't say an expert because I'm not an expert. I, I don't think I'm an expert. But I think people wait to be so, like, big and mighty and untouchable. And my thing is like, hey, fam, I, I, I'm, I, you know, good and dang on well, if you go to a good restaurant, and you're just like, that restaurant is so dope. Like, I need everybody, like, y'all gotta go. I just left. Like, let me tell you right now, I'll, I'll buy you a gift card. Like, yeah. it's like, you just tasted it. It is it, like, I don't know what it's gonna look like in two years when, you know, they get busy and popping. But for right now, the restaurant is so good. Please go. You telling everybody. So for me, that's why the moment that I did write the book felt necessary, felt timely, because it was like, I have just spent the better half of a decade finding out about a dream, living a dream, sitting in the dream. And now I'm like, hey fam, let me let me tell you what it was like. Don't don't get it twisted. Th don't let these checks fool you. It was hard. It was crazy. I wanted mm -hmm. God to take his dreams back because I would <laughs> rather somebody else's nightmares because this is some trash. <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know if I want to follow you anymore. And it's like, that's a real feeling. And so if you're feeling that, please don't give up. It's, you're just human. You're just natural. It's, it's, it's natural. But I, I guarantee you on the other side of it, you're going to be glad you didn't give up. Well, here's what I want to know. I want to know, what did you know about yourself when you were younger? That mm. like some people will say, <laughs> I always knew I was going to be a doctor. I always knew I was going to be a writer. I always knew, or I didn't really know. But now when I look back, th these are the, the obvious things that, mm. um, that totally make sense about me as to why I'm doing what I'm doing now. I mean, you're multi-passionate. Of course, you're an actress, you're a comedian, you're a writer, you're an author. Um, yes. but when you look back, what did you know when you were young or what do you now know looking mm -hmm. back at your youth about how you so, ended up where you are now? I didn't know I was ever going to be a performer. 
I didn't. Like you weren't always the performer, like at six, making everybody let laugh. Me, let me, let me, be, let me, let me, prep, let me, let me, <laughs> let me walk you through it. Okay? I can't imagine that. I can't imagine there wasn't some version of this then. <laughs> well, I grew up in a very Nigerian household. I know, but whether still. You, whether you were performing or not, it did not mean you was gonna be making a living from it. <laughs> so, so, so here's some, so here's some telltale signs that I should have known some things, right? So, um, when I was bullied at school, uh, there were these, uh, uh, talent shows, this is a talent show. <laughs> there were talent shows. <laughs> and because I ain't had no friends, nobody ever wanted to do the talent show with me, but Yvonne Orji would pick a song by total by escape by SWV. Uh -huh. These were girl groups. <laughs> and it's just me <laughs> with one mic doing all the parts <laughs> because it wasn't going to stop that I wanted to do that song. It was it was never going to stop. And it's so funny there's a there's a um there's a teacher who I still keep in, in contact with. She was fifth, she was a fifth grade teacher at Oakland Element um Eisenhower Middle. Was it? No, yeah, she was a middle school teacher. This is middle school. Yes, uh, at Eisenhower Middle School, sixth grade teacher, Miss Rice. Woo child. Back then she was Miss George, but so now she's Miss Rice. She would be like, you know the girls don't like you. Why are you doing this? Because in my mind, I was just like, if I can win them over by my fantastic performance, like, come on. And each year they were like, we don't like you all the more. And it didn't stop me. So then the other thing that was telling, because there's three things. So that was the one, the talent shows that didn't stop it. Then I would go, I would be in the bathroom and I would start creating conversations. Because again, you ain't got no friends. So I would be role playing. Like when I when I get to school and I see her, I'm going to be like, what up though? You know, like I would just, I would, I would make up scenarios. <laughs> And either I was fighting them back or I was practicing how to be their best friend. Like I was literally rehearsing, I, again, things that actors do. Mm -hmm. I was rehearsing scenes, not even knowing. Cut to, again, because I was bullied, you're isolated. I would go to the library. I would rent 12 books at a time and just get lost in words and worlds. Sweet Valley High, Goosebump. Go Jessica and Elizabeth were my friends. Okay? But mine too. They were, mine too. They were mm -hmm. Lily White, but I was like, this girl, if she don't get with Todd, then I don't even understand. Like, <laughs> ooh, it's that's like, I didn't know where Sweet Valley High was, but I wanted to be a student because I was like, that high school is cracking. Okay. They're getting into all the things. And for me, that was my escape. It was like these worlds. I could, I could, I could transport. I can, I can be somewhere else and not have to remind myself that I'm isolated and destitute and friendless and it felt loveless. So when I look back now over my life, and hey, I think things over, come on, it's like, oh, those were seeds. And then of course, um, when you're beaten down enough and you try to like rise up but you still get beaten down. There comes a point where you're just like, oh, all right, well, we did everything we can do. Maybe, maybe that won't even work. And so that cut to, I'm a grad student and God tells me to do comedy. I'm like, no, sir. We, we remember, remember back in sixth grade when we were doing that? No, I'm good. Cause here's the thing. It's one thing to lip sync <laughs> somebody else's song. It's true. It's another thing to like have to curate jokes that could not work in front of an audience like Nigerians because it was the Miss Nigerian American pageant. Baby, I said, hey, God, hey, God, yeah, no, I'm not doing this with you. And then I did it anyway. And here we are. <laughs> here we are. I didn't think I was funny, but I used to sit on my daddy's lap. My daddy, I, I grew up with all men, like in my household, and it was just me and my mom. And my dad, I remember when we would go to Nigeria, like he would hold court. 
they would, we would sit outside on the veranda and it would be him and his friends drinking like Guinness or Heineken. Mm-hmm. And you just hear an eruption of laughter. Just, ho, ho, ho. Like, German laughter be like, okay, yeah. Santa Claus is here. But it'd be like, ho, I mean, did I tell you about the time that? And then they just like <laughs> laughing. And so I would just be sitting like, what? You know, and my dad would be like, you're here enjoying senior jokes. And I was like, I guess, I don't know. But when I, when God deposited the idea of comedy in me, I just remembered like, I want to have that power, whatever that was. Like, I want to have the ability to make my dad laugh. I want to have the ability to make his friends laugh. Like, cause okay. that was, those were the moments where I, it was just like the little girl in me was mesmerized by this thing that I didn't even understand then. But now God was putting it in my heart. I'm like, if I have the power to to do that thing that I was mesmerized by so many years ago, that's what I want. So the thing is, and you said it a couple of different ways, God gave me the idea, God deposited the thought about comedy. And you're right, there are. You don't go to college, you know, Nigerian or not, uh, <laughs> nobody, nobody rarely does. I mean, you know, there are things that are the check boxes, you know, um, and I know culturally there are some specific check boxes, but very few people say, go to college and work on your comedy, you know? Um, yeah, no, so that's, that, not what I, that's not what I said either. Well, no, that's what, that's why I think it's so important for me to ask you this question. Um, people everywhere want to know, how do I know when God is telling me something? How do I know when it's a God idea? It's, you know, it's not just a random idea. It's a God idea. Like I didn't just have a, you know, a blip of my mind. Like God is telling me something. And I think that is so out of the way of what would be normally accessible to you based on upbringing and thought and all that. Mm -hmm. What did that look like? How did God deposit? How did he tell you? How did that idea come to you? And how did you know that idea was God? I was getting my master's in public health because I was stalling from not going to med school. Because that's the plan. That was the plan. (laughs) Yes. And the only thing Nigerians love more than education is more education. So I was like, if I am in school I can buy myself two and a half more years to figure out how (laughs) I either don't go to med school and tell them or figure out how to like blood so I can go to med school. Like I was like, whose doctor was I going to be if I didn't like blood? Whose? Please. (laughs) Oh, Jesus wept. Um, (laughs) And he was crying for me. So anyway, um, I'm getting my master's and this pageant comes up. And I don't think anything about it because, again, I in my mind believes like I could be a model or whatever. But with, again, I was beaten down so much. I was like, am I even pretty? <laughs> am I like, I literally was just like, I'm not, it's cool. And, but then my brother was like, Hey, I have my friends who are doing this, um, this Nigerian American pageant. Are you like, they're looking for contestants. What do you think? And I think the thought of it was like, Oh my God, maybe I could be pretty. You know, it's was like, mm. what if I am pretty? And, and so I focused only on that. Like I went and got a dress, a swimsuit. And two weeks before the pageant, they were like, so what's your talent? What's your I talent? Like, <laughs> I said, oh, I, I, oh I, I, I don't have one. I'm a child of immigrants. My talent is making straight A's, but I don't know how I could do that on stage. Like, I just like, I don't know. <laughs> so mind you, I had, I was raised Catholic was Catholic up until freshman year of college when I got saved when I was 17. So that's when I really started like, applying the word to my life right or knowing that you could do that so um now i'm 23 ish 23 24 and i was like hey god um i mean they said that you could come through um especially when people are in a bind like this is like my legit prayer um it's a good one because, it, it you know, all through college, I, I just I knew God is like, God, I need some free food. God, help me through this test. You know what I mean? Like, this is now like, uh, hey, God, I don't I don't want to be laughed at. I don't want to embarrass my family that has already bought tickets. Because I would have, I was about to, I was like, 
Y'all can have the pageant. I'm going to just not do it. But it was two weeks before. People were, were like, we got our tickets. We're here to support you. I was like, oh, oh, all y'all. I actually have to stay in it. Ooh. Yeah, I, I had like, I came back out. Because if it was just like, I ain't tell nobody. It's like, well, I'm no longer a contestant. God bless them. All y'all. So now I'm like, things are on the table. And because I, was a, I, I, I am now a reformed people pleaser but back then i was in the height of my people pleasing so it was like well i i, I don't want to make them mad and i don't want to you know disappoint the people who bought tickets and da, da, da. so i was like hey god um real talk i need help like i don't know what to do and like i need i need help quick like what's a talent like wh what do i do good am i good at anything like literally asking these questions as i'm finishing i hear holy spirit say do comedy it won't even a full sentence because because I feel like you should do like that's more of a full <laughs> sentence. It was it was like do comedy. I was like, who are you talking to? Like it was so wild. And I was just like, what? And I remember started arguing. I started wrestling. I was like, I can't do that. Because again, <laughs> when the girl who used to be in the bathroom rehearsing scenes is now in the bedroom, like going back and forth with Jesus. And was like, that doesn't make any sense. I've never done comedy. Am I even funny? What if they don't laugh at me? Like, so I'm, I'm like having a nervous reaction. Mm -hmm. And I hear Holy Spirit say, either you're going to learn to trust me or you won't. Mm. That and then he stopped right. talking. And I said, whoa, 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 fam. I thought we supposed to have dialogues. Okay, you coming through with proverbs and then you dip it. That's ridiculous. Okay, I need us to have a conversation. Okay, <laughs> una conversación. Like about this thing that's about to bring me so much anxiety. When he said either you're going to learn to trust me or you won't and dipped out, like he wasn't going back and forth. He's like, I'm living my best life. Like he said, I'm not going back and forth with you, sis. And when I tell you that voice was gone, and so one thing your listeners should know about me is that because people were so shifty towards me, mm -hmm. I could not, um, I could not hold on to like them as consistent, could not hold on to them as um, reliable. Mm -hmm. So when I got saved and they were basically like, the word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's the friend that's to get closer than the brother, even if your mother and father forsake you. Like, he was that thing that I was like, so you mean to tell me, like, he for me and not against me? Mm -hmm. And, like, he got a couple rules or whatnot. And, like, if we follow them, we Gucci. So, so you held on tight. <laughs> Christianity for me was very, I don't say plug and chug, but it felt very systematic. I, get, I can understand it. I get it because I could understand we friends one day and because somebody else told you not to be my friend, all of a sudden mm -hmm. we're not friends because, but you didn't ever talk to me and I didn't actually do anything to you. You just don't want, like, I couldn't understand that. That's too, that's too volatile. Mm -hmm. The same yesterday, today, and forevermore, I, I come before you so you can have life and life more abundantly. The, the blessings of the Lord making you rich and adds no sorrow to them. The, I know the plans I have, like, this is what he, so, okay, for me, I held on so tight <laughs> to mm -hmm. those promises. Mm -hmm. And so at that moment, even though I was deathly afraid and deathly confused, I was like, huh, is this one of those moments that God knows more about me than I know for, about myself? Huh, this was only one way to find out. Like, it was just, it was like, what, what would I be missing out on if I didn't listen to God? And I was too afraid to find that out. Like I was like, I didn't want to get I, like, there's a chapter in the book called fear is food poisoning, but regret is herpes. And y'all can, you know, figure out what you want to figure out about that title, but it is what it is. It's it, I'm, I'm going to stick my side. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> my fave. I love that so I, much. Yes, I can break down what it means to anybody who has herpes. This is not a herpes shaming uh, chapter at all, but I would say 99.9% .9 of people who have herpes would rather not. The end. Um, and so that's the why end. fear is food poisoning because it's like, you know, food poisoning sucks, but you throw it up, you excrete it, and it's gone. You know what I mean? You take a little Pedialyte, a little, little Ensure, a little Gatorade, and we're back in it. Okay? We're back <laughs> in it. But regret is the fear that you let take root, and you didn't spit up, you didn't throw up, you didn't excrete. 
Mm-hmm. So now you can still have a good life. Most people with herpes have a good life. One in three people have it. But every once in a while, you get a flare up. And you know, it ain't all it ain't always great when that flare up comes, you know? Yeah. But you, you you can still live a very good functional life. But every so for me, every once in a while, that flare up for me in the context of what I talk about in the chapter is somebody else is living my dream. <gasps> Look at her. Every time I see her on TV, I know that was supposed to be me. Oh, dang it, somebody else wrote a book on it. Was, I had that idea. Dang. Uh Somebody else is on tour with Chris Rock. I love Chris Rock. That was supposed to be. Uh, that's that's regret that I didn't. I didn't want to experience yeah. that. Yeah. And so for me, in that moment, I am like, I don't even know what this could look like. I also know that I don't want to be a doctor either. <laughs> so I'm looking for a way out. I'm not thinking this is the way out, but I'm looking for a way out. So I just was like, well what will it cost me to trust God? And if he said it, just like he told Gideon, he was a mighty man of valor. And he was like, who me? Just, just like he told Abraham, he would be the father of many nations. So just like he told jo- uh, Joseph, he would, you know, he had a dream. I was like, what if this is me being one of those characters in the Bible? What and if? like, what if I'm Esther right now? And I, I need my, if I perish, I perish moment. I know I don't have no uncle named Mordecai, but what if this is my moment? And so I literally held on to that. I was like, well, he left, so I can't really have this conversation with him. But if he's calling me to trust him in another way, I always, when it came to faith, I always had a not on my watch um, attitude about it. It was like, you know, my pastor in Maryland would always say, if you're the only Jesus that some people will ever see is God in trouble. Mm-hmm. And I remember being like, not on my watch, no, not on my watch. So yeah, that's, that's to answer your, the long, very answer to answer your question. So you said so many great things. I, I want to uh, ask you though, about, you, you said reform people pleaser. Mm-hmm. And you talked about your journey being younger, being isolated and you being bullied. And then you said, when the pa- pageant comes, you're like, am I pretty? Mm-hmm. Then the question comes, am I funny? Mm-hmm. What do those questions look like now in your life? So I think you have enough life lived at this point to know that God has and continues to custom design your life, surprise mm-hmm. you, give you opportunities you didn't see coming. Mm-hmm. So you have you have this history of look at what he's done, but you know, they're still the little girl. So what does that look like to deal with that? Yes, we are holding on to Jesus and all that. Does that stuff crop up? I mean, how much therapy has it taken? Uh, When it crops up, what are your tools? Because I can't imagine that the life that you live now, which is so much in the public eye, and, you know, whether it's the next part or the next tour or the next book, Questions like that that are embedded early, sometimes they have a they have a way of cropping back up. So um, and it's hard, you know, show business is hard. So what does that look like now in your life or how have you learned to deal with it when it cropped back up as you continue to see God do wonderful things in your life? So what's funny is (laughs) um, I go from. Broke up and coming actor to series regular um on a show and then the character i play is the sexy you know high uh high achieving gainfully employed luxury (laughs) brand wearing (laughs) and then then came the attention Oh, Yvonne, Yvonne Orji, she fine. She, and then came the anger. (laughs) I was so angry. I was so angry because I think for the longest time I had told myself was not going to be looks, you know what I mean? Or just like I'm, I have to build myself up with character, with all the other things. 
because I've been told for so long I was ugly. And so I didn't folk when if someone gave me a compliment like, ooh, you cute, it's like, but am I smart? Mm. Like I would just be like, I would just like the like factory default setting was Okay, and like, am I like that's stupid because y'all y'all don't even see me as that. So I focused all my attention on I'm gonna be intelligent, I'm gonna be you know resourceful, I'm gonna be whatever. <laughs> and then it's just like women crush Wednesday. I was like, who? <laughs> <laughs> and then I was so mad. I was angry because it was like, so I get some straight weaves. And a little bit of makeup, and now y'all see me. Mm. Ugh, I've been me, you know. Like it's just like it was. I was so angry. Like you know, the Bible does say, "Man looks on the outward." It does. I mean, it kind of told you in advance. <laughs> it, it did. It did. I, 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 the, all the verses I looked at, that was the one that was like I didn't think applied to me in that in that context. But it was like. Y'all, again, it, it reinforced the shiftiness of people. Mm. I have been at the comedy clubs. I have been, you know, my character, my integrity, and the way that I operate in excellence has been continuous. But all of a sudden, my name is on some credits. You see me in these outfits that I had to give back to production. This weave that comes right on off. And all of a sudden... I'm a woman crush. <laughs> like, where were y'all when I was getting bullied? Where were y'all when I no one was telling me I was pretty? So I so there was a lot of it was a lot of it wasn't even resentment. It was just really it was really anger. It was probably both resentment and anger. Who were you angry at? You're angry at something you can't control. It's you're angry at perception. Mm-hmm. You're angry at societal norms and 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 and, and societal perception of beauty of fame like because I, I, like, you know, I, I was never like i'm gonna be i want to i want to be famous no i was like i want to be successful so i can eat because it has been lean days and i just want to be a working actor like my goal was like working actor i knew god was going to supersize it in what whatever way he was going to do it i was mad at the the mindset you know what it was i was i was mad at the mindset and it's just like you can't control the mindset though you can't the mindset is what it is but yeah. i was so mad at the mindset because it it wasn't nuanced it didn't take into account like like everything about me like even like even the mindset right of like of waiting like you know people know that i'm, I'm waiting they know but the, the the current mindset is like ew don't nobody want that like why she proud of that and it's just like Really? <laughs> really? And there, the the mindset could also, the other mindset could be like, you're the only one that's going to ever be able to run up on, run up in this. Like, that should be a prize. Okay, <laughs> that should be for you. Not, 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 that, not that I'm saying that, like, yeah. I'm a trophy, but right. for somebody, somebody can look at that as like, that, you know, that's what I desire, that's what I want. But, but the mindset is, ew. And it's like, Really? Cause I don't even have the mindset like that for y'all. You know, I don't have the mindset for like, my thing is like it's different strokes of different folks. Like everybody, like if you are fully happy and engaging in how you want, then turn up. But the fact that the general overall mindset is like, when before there used to be a mindset of like, you don't even get married if that's not even how you rock in it. You know what I mean? So it's like the mindset shifts. And I think for me, that mindset shift swung so far that I was just like, so one day I could be the same exact person, but because I got some makeup on and a hair that don't even belong to me, now the mindset is that I'm pretty. It's almost like the mindset has created experiences for you that you can't control. It's like if people's oh. mindset is like ugly or mindset is not talented or mindset is we don't want to be your friend. It controls your experience. But if people's mindset is straight hair, weave, good clothes, somewhat of a success, I can see your name, then all of a sudden it shifts. But even that, even the good, I can't yeah. control. You know, I can get I get that. I, get I that. can't control that. I'd be mad. Right. So fast forward. We are probably in 20. When? Either 2020 or early 2021, 
I had a therapy, I won't say tw- tw- late 2020 or early 2021. Um, so we're in the thick of the pandemic and a therapist was she asked me, to, can you look at yourself in the mirror and say you're beautiful? And I was like, sometimes. She was like, well, that, herein lies the problem, <laughs> you know? And it's like, well, when, when is it sometimes? I'm like, I mean, when I've when I've been glam, like, so basically when a hair and makeup crew has come, beat my face to the gods and put on some hair that don't belong to me or cut my hair, you know, whatever, because at that time I think I had my short hair, my natural hair. Um, and I look like only you can look when you have a glam team you have a whole team that's correct a a team (laughs) t-e-a-m and there is no i in that team then and only then can i be like oh i can see it and so i then began the work of like okay you don't fully love yourself and you are looking for someone to love and validate you in a way that you never were but that's putting so much power in somebody else. And so for me, my work was, I want to get to a place where I have no makeup on and I can look at myself and be like, she a bad chick. And so it's so funny. I was recently in a relationship and he would hear me every so often <laughs> just in the mirror be like, oh, you cute. I see you. You fine. And he was like, what are you doing? <laughs> He was like, he was like, you say that to yourself often. And I said, yeah, because there was a time when I couldn't. And so I had to continuously remind myself, like, she bad. And not in a way that I'm trying to get myself to believe it, but in a way that, like, I am so proud that I can get to this moment where it's not put on. It is that, like, oh, she, we ain't even got makeup on. Oh, look at your skin, get it out. Look at your teeth, white. Ooh, you are your gang, 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 gang. Like, I really had to <laughs> get to a place where if don't nobody tell me I'm beautiful today, first of all, they lying. And <laughs> and if don't nobody tell me, I'm, I already told myself, my, cu- my cup is so full, you can't even get in. Mm. What I hear you saying Well, this is what I'm receiving out of what you're saying. Let me put it like that. You can't control anybody else's mindset, but you can control your own. And once you realize that and you work on having the right mindset, then everybody else's mindset doesn't matter. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, I think we try to be like, everybody doesn't matter. It's like, it it, it affects, it can affect you, but you know, I think when when we say it don't matter, it's like, I think there's no nuance. It's like, sometimes some people's mindsets can hurt. Some yeah. people's mindsets can, um, because I think sometimes we get so into the like, it don't matter, I don't need nobody. I don't, it's like, okay, there's a little childhood wounding in there. Um, <laughs> because you can, two things can be true. You can be like, you know what? It hurts and um, it affects me a little bit, but I have more of my mindset there that even though this good. came in, mine supersedes it. So it doesn't affect me as much as it used to. It doesn't mean that it still doesn't like have a ping, but this is how I know I've grown in that it doesn't cripple me like maybe it once did. You can listen. You don't have to be defined by it. I I think that, you know, the sweet spot, obviously, that you're in because you have a book where you talk about, you know, bamboozled by Jesus to me is the is your way of saying, I mean, the subtitle, how God tricked me into the life of my dreams. But it. He kind of has to do that because we would never choose yeah. what he we would never we would never think of it. And if we thought of it, we wouldn't choose it. We wouldn't we wouldn't go. That's the way I want to go. Um, yeah, and, the minute, and the minute it got a little bit hard, we'd be like, he tripping. This is why I don't be this is why we don't come to church no more. Because here's the, the whole like the 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 the, the seminal um Bible character that I focus on is Joseph, right? It's like God gave Joseph a dream. And we can talk, we can go Joseph and Gideon. Let me just, let me just walk this out. We, we got time a little bit. Um, we can go Joseph, Joseph and Gideon because it's like, Joseph had a dream. He got so excited. He told his brothers, his brothers was like, who you think you is? Like, and then they are like, we're going to kill you. So he gets saved. That's fine. But then he's now a slave. That's, that's, that's not sexy. Nobody, 
It's whack. And then he's like, all right, you know what? Let me just be a person of integrity. Let me just, let me just out here. Maybe if I do good work, um, then, you know, people will see that I'm, I'm a good human being and maybe they'll release me. Nope. Uh, part of his wife is like, no, what I see is them abs, Joseph. What I see is, <laughs> what I see is that backside. It's, it's giving Raphael the doll. Hey, hey, the upper room. Let's lift it up. <laughs> and he's like, I, st- I still want to be a person of integrity. And that integrity got him in jail. So now he's in jail. Now he's like, well, should I just have slept with her? Because what, what are we doing? Because now I'm in jail. At least I had a job as a slave, but a job in a castle. Now I'm in jail. Okay, cool, 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 cool. I got favor. That's fine. Oh, let me let me interpret these dreams. Maybe they'll remember me. Nope, they done forgot about me too. I'm I'm back in here. All of that stuff is just like how how did I have a dream that I shared with my family and now I'm in jail? But then you get to the second in command, yeah. vice president of Egypt. But that was such a long time. Then you yeah. get to Gideon. Gideon is minding his business. Gideon is like, listen, let me just die poor. I'm good. Like, I, I ain't got nothing. I ain't going to be nothing. I'm just like my no good daddy. Like, whatever. Like, whatever the story was, Gideon was like, I'm the quintessential that. And then one day an angel's like, what up, mighty man of valor? Who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? What? You back? Hey, that's the other village. <laughs> they, 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 that, that, that man don't live here. Love don't live here anymore. That's not me. And it's like, nah, Gideon, you're the one that's going to save everybody. Gideon's like, hold on. Let me... Let me put Jesus, let me put God through some tests a little bit. Can you make this dry? Can you make this? What? Okay, ten. it's really me. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Then Gideon's like, I'm going to go fight the war. All right, God, you got it. Cool, cool, cool. Wait, what you mean? I got to get rid of some of my soldiers. Well, I, I need I need them. I do. I All of them. Okay, no, you 300. How are they going to win this war? Cool, 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 cool. All right, well, good thing we got weapons. I'm sorry, what? Blow the trumpets? Jesus, you can you wait too much. It's like every step of the way, it's like every way you thought this was gonna happen, God was like, no. But if he would have been like, hey, Gideon, you're a mighty man of value, you're gonna go and you're gonna defeat our, your enemies by blowing the trumpet, he'd be like, You got me twisted. Uh, hey fam, hey, stab yourself. Like that's what I would have told the angel. That's because there's no version where that made any sense. I, it already don't make a sense that you're calling me a, a a warrior, and now you're telling me that as a warrior I'm not gonna fight. I have to play. I have to play instruments. I don't even like music. I don't, I don't even like music. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what Ben Blues because, like to your point, we would never go if God was like, if I did not do good at that pageant, we would not be here. God was like, I gotta be strategic with this one. I got. I gotta make sure she gets all the laughter, top heavy. Up front, okay. She needs to get hooked, okay. Like I was tilapia, okay. I won't even say anything. I was, I was, I was coming in hot, and I heard the laughter, and I was like, "Oh my god, they're laughing at me. Maybe I could be good at this." And then I did what Gideon did. Hey God, okay. I, I know if that wasn't a fluke. If you let me perform in a place that's not just full of Nigerians and I get the same laughter. Okay. Then I enter a pageant, another pageant, a, a, a comedy festival, like a competition, uh, DC's funniest college student. So now it's just, it's all white. It's all white students at GW. You know, and they, they ain't never <laughs> been to Nigeria. You know, some black people from other universes from Howard and you know, whatever. But I, I end up winning for GW. Then I'm like, oh my God. So part of winning is that you compete with all the other students who won at the DC Improv. So it's me and 15 other guys. And I didn't win the competition, but afterwards this uh, Asian guy and this uh, Indian guy came up to me and they said, oh my God, you were so funny. You remind us of our mothers just with a different accent. (laughs) That was it. Like that was when I was like, I think I got something. Mm-hmm. And I didn't get my first rejection or bombing until years later, like maybe two, maybe two years after I started. But I was already in. Like, I, like, and I, I when I tell you that rejection, I said, "God, I'm out. You got the wrong person. I'm tired of this. This is the why I didn't want to start this in the first place. Didn't nobody tell you to give me this stupid dream, like my girl, baby. I, I, I was packing my bags." <laughs> 
okay, you could have this. And I don't even know if I want to be a Christian no more. Like, I just, I was done. I was gone. And God was like, one bad night does not dictate your destiny. That's good. You know that he has uh, custom designed your life, in your words, to be magnificent. Magnificent. Mm -hmm. Um, So now you're in your 30s, right? You're still in your 30s? Yeah, there's, there's still, we're holding on to that three. You know, okay. it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna change later this year. It's just gonna change. But yeah. I'm, I'm right now I'm holding on. Okay. So God's changing three. Ha <laughs> ha. So since you can look back and say, look at the things that he pulled from to give me mm -hmm. something I did not plan for, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm curious, even though we know he can do more than what we think what are you thinking you're already in a bunch of lanes doing a bunch of different things what do you hope the next 10 years brings like when you whisper maybe you don't want to share all your whispers but when you whisper some like what are you like i don't know how to get there i don't know there's a gap i don't know how to fill it there's a bridge there's a there's a you know a chasm i don't know how to bridge over it is what do you want that's more that you're like, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I know you know how to custom make stuff. Yeah, I feel like I'm still on the ground level of so many things. And mm -hmm. I think the next thing that God is going to blow my mind in is my love story. Like, I just, he has to. Like, he, <laughs> he has to. <laughs> He had like, on, like God, let every man be a liar. <laughs> like he has to. Like he, he. I would renegotiate all the contracts I've made with him if, if he don't. Like he has to. And it, it's one of those things where I've I've seen him be so faithful and so forthcoming and so mind blowing in my career. And I'm mm. like, I don't think that that's where he wants to stop. So that that's the I can't see I, like I, my dream for that is so big and so magnanimous. And then I'm like, he said he will do the exceedingly abundantly above all. So he has to. Um, and then it relates to like my life. I, I got to a point where God told me like. Oh, not, not even God told me like I realized like, dang, I got to dream new dreams. And I was kind of shook because I thought the dreams that I had <laughs> would take so long to accomplish. And girl, I did all of that <laughs> within the first five seasons. And I was like, dang, okay. Um, I got a dream new <laughs> to a lot of dreams. Like, Wait a minute. I got, I got to manufacture I, new dreams. I got the girl. When I tell you I was at a loss, I was like, <laughs> cause I was like, this is going to be big. This is going to be lofty. Like a comedy to, Oh, okay. I already did that. I did that twice. Okay. Um, a book. Oh, okay. We already sold that. Okay. Um, me. Okay. Beating Oprah. Okay. We already did that. Um, she did no boat. So now I'm just like, what else you got for me? <laughs> like I almost tapped out of my bigness. I tapped in. I was like, well, God feed me some new dreams. What you got? So there's a part of me that's kind of waiting for him to just drop some bigness in me. Cause I'm like, I, I low key feel real basic right now, Jesus. Well, the thing know. is, you know, he does it. He drops things as you told us yeah. near the beginning when we can't even figure out what to dream. He gives us dreams that we didn't know we would ever even have. Cause if he, if he told us they would scare us too much to even like, we couldn't believe them. Like, I couldn't, I wouldn't believe my life it was if it wasn't mine. You know what I mean? Like I'm an immigrant from, I'm an immigrant from Nigeria, fam. Like when I started this, there wasn't there wasn't a Uza Aduba that was popping. Like there wasn't we might have had Chiwetel, Idris, and David Yellowo in the in the African space, but Afrobeats wasn't even a thing. Y'all was going to concerts. So I'm the Nigerian that's like, yeah, God gave me a dream. And I want to, you know, and I'm at, I'm hosting weddings and people look at me like, this one is a clown. No, no, who will marry her? She's a jester. Hey, I feel bad for her mother. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> and so it's like my stock, you know, is is diminishing. And in, in, again, in some perspectives, 
because I chose to believe God and 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 dream a dream. And then now mm. I'm getting, oh my gosh, thank you for doing what you do you're doing. We we played your special for our parents and you know they were they they laughed and now every time they see you they're like you should be like that Yvonne <laughs> I mean, this thing you want to do. So now it's like oh there's a blueprint. And that's all they needed to see. Uh, especially African parents, it's like they, one person does it. It's like, then why are you not doing this thing that this person? And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa! You didn't even allow me to go. I'm like what? <laughs> so now it's like I'm, I'm the, I'm the one that that parents talk about. Like I was mad when they were talking about somebody else's daughter who was a doctor. So I apologize to all y'all uh, kids of African descent. I'm so sorry that I was successful. I, 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 it's not going to end well for you in your house with the comparisons. I'm sorry for being now the comparison. I apologize, but I just had to, you know, do what the Lord told me. So, um, Chris, when you ask about dreams, I believe God will take my voice and my joy to strive astronomical levels you know like nations you know not of will summon you nations you do not know of will call you by name like that that's what has been deposited in me um and it is through the joy and the love mm. of people and of god because i'm even i think one of the greatest gifts that has come from this love offering of being bamboozled by Jesus and writing this book is when I get the DMs by people who are like, I'm Muslim, but your book was so inspiring. And I was like, I love that. Cause it's not a, it's not a conversion story. It's not a conversion tale. Yeah. I'm not asking anyone who reads it to like rededicate their life. I'm saying that I'm just a young black girl from Potakot, Nigeria who came here and, went against her parents' wishes because she thought God's wishes were bigger and better. And now we're here. I just yeah. did a talk show where a white woman came and was like, I don't even identify as Christian, but I really, your book inspired me to do something. And I was like, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And it, it is the love of God. That's what we're supposed to share. Um, mm -hmm. And it, and it could sound lofty or, like, oh, what do you mean you hear from God? That's crazy. It's like, I just try to make it accessible, attainable, understandable. And what anybody else does with it is what they do with it. But, you know, I think the desire to continue, continue to please him. If ever I was going to continue to be a people pleaser, it would be pleasing that one person. Mm. He, Holy Spirit, Jesus, God. And through that obedience, the world has not even began to see what God is going to do with, for, and through me. And I honestly can't even fathom it. It's so good. My mom would call someone like you a trailblazer. I would say, why does it have to be this way? And why... Can I not follow anyone else's blueprint? And why does it seem so hard? Why is it taking so long? Why do I feel so alone in the journey that I have? And she would say, oh, it's just because God knew he could trust you to be a trailblazer. So I know that's I what she'd say that. to you. <laughs> I received Your mom was so sweet. God knows that her light and her love and her joy lives on in all of her kids. Um, but I would also say to that, I used to get so mad when people would be like, you're ahead of your time. And it sounds like such a compliment. It's the loneliest place to be. <laughs> it's a very lonely place to be. Yes, it is. A trailblazer ahead of your time. They are just really good words for telling for telling people <laughs> no one is going to understand you. They're going to call you crazy. They're yes. not going to help you. <laughs> no. You're going to be island by yourself. <laughs> I know you just a moment from your mom. And then I'm just like, no, it's true. 
Well, because after she told me that, I said, what that means is the people that go first are the ones that get ripped to shreds by all the thorns and the bushes and the trees. I am going first and I'm bleeding out here. I didn't tell you that part, but that's that was what happened after that conversation. <laughs> Well, see, I, I, I felt the spirit of that part. And so I was like, hey, guys, for everybody who's like, I will be a trailblazer. Let me tell you the response. Ho, 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 right. Tell me, ho, ho, you don't want to. Hold on. Don't 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 go too on. quick. It's great. But the job is good. And you know what? It's so funny that you would say that because when I first got in, like when I, when Jesus was first, like, giving me the visions and helping me understand, like, what the responsibility was, he showed me Joshua. And he was like, three days from now, you're going to go into the land the Lord your God is giving you. He was like, go and make sure um, your brothers and sisters have taken control of the land. And then you yourself can take. And it was like, OK, I know my pastor said we were a gateway ministry and it sounded great. Right. It's not a great, you know, 10 years ago when I got this word. But I'm like, OK, my job is to get people to their blessing. OK. Mm -hmm. All right. And then, and then, you know, so it's just like, if, if you're a parent, you eat last. <laughs> it's like, but I'm yes. hungry. I'm yes. hungry. And I, and I remember just feeling this way a couple of days ago because I'm such, like, I, I know I'm a giver. I know I'm a conduit. I know I'm a connector. All of the things I know. And you tell me you have an idea. I'm like, fantastic. Let me figure out who, who I know that can do this. And da, 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 da. I'm already connecting you with somebody. I'm already like sending the email. I'm, I can't remember what I was doing, but I definitely, somebody needed something. And I was like, hey, my friend is doing this thing and blah, 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 blah. And I'm talking to these people who I'm like, you might be the answer. And they're like, you know what? We should actually connect her with so-and-so because it sounds like da, da, da. And she texts me. She's like, oh, my God, girl, thank you so much. I have a meeting set with blah, blah, blah. And I was like, all right, great. I hope it works out. And I, the minute it happened, there was a moment where I was like, God, where are my helpers? <laughs> Who going to help me? You know, because I'm like, I need an assistant. I need a chief of staff. I need a production partner. I need a, like, I'm, I'm all the things. I'm like, I need the people who can help me move my vision to another level. And we still, you know, da, 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 da. <laughs> And, mm -hmm. and, and then I know these are people who want to be me. I need the people who really see me and love me and want to support the vision that you've given to, like, the servant's heart. <laughs> <laughs> and God just said, remember Joshua? Uh. And I was like, all right. But how long is it going to take him to possess the land? When are they going to be happy in the land? <laughs> <laughs> but I had, but I, it was a very real emotion. It was like, yo, bro, like, even Abraham had Aaron, though. Like, seriously, stop playing me. Stop playing. And sometimes you just have to know that that's your role. So the trailblazer is the ahead of your time. I know. The, the it's time. amazing. And it has. But but CC Winans, I talked to her recently. She said, and I'm paraphrasing, because Hoda had asked her, you know, all these other opportunities that have come. Why, why haven't you done? There's so many things you could have done. And she said, because if I do anything different than what God is asking me to do, how he's asking me to do it, I'm living beneath my purpose. So mm -hmm. you could do things different ways and other people would have gone first, but you would have not maximized or been living at the level that you were designed to live at. So it'll all make sense one day. But I mean, just know you're, you're not as alone as you think. There are just other people walking on their own trails. But every now and then, you know, again, you just holler out, hello, anybody uh, yeah. else out there? And somebody well, will listen, echo you back. No it is that thing of God knows he can get more to you. If he knows he can get more through you because the reality is like with everything he has gotten to me, that's how I'm able to be a conduit. You yes, know what I mean? Like, that's right. like, because if he, there's a version where he could have gotten some to somebody else, but they're not as generous or as giving or as, you know, connecting as I am. And so it's like, it would have just stopped with them. And he's like, well, that doesn't help. That doesn't help this train that I want, you know, people to be on. So it's like, who can I trust? Who can I trust? Who can I trust that will come back to me? Okay, her. 
her. And that's why like, the book I talk about, I was like, I'm not that special. Y'all be like, oh, it's because you're so, I'm not that. I know a lot of celebrities. They are not as happy as I am. And they have more. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm not that special. I'm not that, like, whimsical. I'm not that. I, I really, it was very simple. I just kept saying yes. Kept being obedient. Kept being someone he can trust. It really is that simple. People are like, really how are you is. able to it be really in Hollywood? Is. And it's because, I, one, I never asked to be here. And right. so God knew that Hollywood, he could put me in Hollywood without Hollywood getting in me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can be in it, but I don't have to be of it. So it's like, who can God, who can God trust? That even if they are excited by the, the things that they get through the life, he knows they will always come back and sit at his feet and be like, all right, God, what's up? If you are looking for the life of your dream, get, of getting tricked into the life of your dreams and being bamboozled by Jesus, how you do that is being somebody that God can trust. So it's good. really that simple. So good. This is so good. Funny, <laughs> serious, and good. Thanks for joining me, girl. <laughs> <laughs>